Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The Thursday DRF bets race of the day is the sixth at Santa Anita. Beware the Ides of March, the soothsayer said in Julius Caesar, but you don't have to beware the Ides of March with a DRF bets account because if you sign up, you get a $150 bonus. DRF.com forward slash join promo code TV150. Here is the field for race number six at the great race place. $56,000 is the purse. It's a Calbred entry level allowance and free formulator pass performance is available at the race of the day event page on DRF.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order. Matt, the one smiling tiger has kept some pretty good form. Yeah, it really has. I mean, you go and through back and see some of the horses on her page that she's run against. You see the likes of Dream Tree, One Fast Broad, Pulpit Rider, who is also a stakes winner on turf now. So uh, Smiling Tiger, she, she's been keeping good company. The problem I have with Smiling Tiger is twofold. One, her only victory to date was basically in gate-to-wire fashion. I know at first call she was length back, but she quickly changed that. I think there's some other speed in here. And then also... She's not getting any faster, is she? Well, she's slowly improving. Last three buyers, 61, 64, 70. Gradual buyer and improvement. And doing them, as you mentioned, against some good competition. Dream Tree, Midnight Bisou, Show It and Mow It really has improved. She yep. ran away and hid two starts back. And even the horse that beat Smiling Tigress last time out, that horse has won three of four lifetime races. I'm a little bit concerned about this inside post, as you mentioned. Uh, it's up to Tyler Bays now to get a spot, because the two has speed, the three has speed. Uh, Smiling Tigress is going to have to get a position without being shuffled back, but she could easily win. She's 4-1 to one in the morning line. The two is party hostess going out for Jerry Hollendorfer. This one exits a workmanlike victory against open $50,000 starter allowance foes. She was bet down to favoritism that day, and I thought she had to work very, very hard to get it done, but from a buyer standpoint, all of her dirt races are solid, and it appears she has some tactical speed. She can get to the lead, as the time form U.S. pace projector indicates, but I wouldn't be surprised if she concedes if she has to. Yeah, so the big thing for me with this race that I was having a hard time, and the, the pace projector kind of alludes to my fears, that I, I don't know how fast they're going to go, but I think it's going to be a contested pace early on, and my fear is with most of your speed drawn toward the inside, how fast are they going to go? Is it going to be a game of chicken? Who who blinks first? Who goes on with it? Um, I think this filly or this mare at this point, I think she's nice. She fits very well from buyers. For what it's worth, that starter allowance that she won last time so far hasn't come back all that strong, but I think that tactical ability where she doesn't have to go to the lead, I think that could be the difference maker for her as opposed to a horse like uh, Smiling Tigress or even Sharona Sunset. Let's get to Sharona Sunset, the number three, and this horse showed some speed last time out in that Smiling Tigress race and sort of paid the price. Timeform U.S. had one of the fractions, I believe, color-coded blue in that race, so it's not like they were blazing. Sharona Sunset's only win came at Los Al in gate-to-wire fashion. Perhaps she is best on the lead. Timeform U.S. has her close, but not outright on the lead. I think she's got to improve a little bit. Yeah, I think she's going to have to improve considerably. I, I would imagine this is going to be a, a number in the low 70s to win this race from a buyer's standpoint. She's yet to get over 61 in her career. I know that was the most recent start, so I suppose you have an upward sort of trend here. But at the same time, I think she's in a really, really tough spot here. Strike at daylight, the number four, five to two on the morning line. It appears this filly was a private purchase after her upset debut victory for trainer Hector Palma. She popped a 76 buyer that day. Are you concerned that she'll be chasing faster fractions this time around. Yeah, you have to factor that in until they prove to you that they can go on and kind of adapt to the situation. We saw that with Captain Scotty this past weekend in the Triple Bend. He just could not adapt to it against better horses and against a different pace scenario. That could certainly be the case with this filly. From a buyer standpoint, she's the horse to beat. She has the highest last out fig with a 76. Now you get Peter Miller. Miller's done very well with these horses off of a trainer switch and most recently. The concern that I have here is if you like this horse, I think five to two is a pipe dream. I think she's going to get hammered at the windows. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she goes off in that six or seven to five range. Stuart Elliott rides the five. Love a honey badger. Stakes place to her most recent start. The problem is that was back in July of 2016. This is a very long layoff for Love a Honey Badger, who was only earning 49 buyers when we last saw her. Of course, those were two year old numbers. Yeah, I suppose she could take a big step forward here. I'll tell you what, the form and the horses that she was running against as a two-year-old, uh, not good at all. I'm not going to go as far as to say disastrous, but none of them came back to really be anything. There's a part of me that wonders, combine that form with the long layoff off the bench, her only victory to date, gate-to-wire fashion, a uh, lot of things that I don't like. 
If you think the pace will melt down, you notice the red bar on the time form U.S. pace projector indicating the likely the likely chance of a fast pace. Why not Pied and Truly number six? Three starts back, this horse got some pace at Santa Anita. She came with a big run to pull off an 11 to 1 upset. She certainly wasn't embarrassed in two starts at this level at Del Mar. Uh, I think she's an interesting outsider, although this is her first start off a little bit of a layoff. It, to me, I, I would like to use her underneath, and I think the thing that sort of kind of squashes the fears, if you do or if you are concerned about that layoff, she won off of a layoff back in October here at Santa Anita, so I think that's at least a positive thing in your corner. I just, you know, it's always dangerous to take a horse that comes from off the pace at Santa Anita on the main track. Uh, I would use her underneath. You see she's run third five times from 13 lifetime starts. Twisted Rosie has a little bit more speed than Pied and True, but probably is still going to be in the second flight behind the early speeds, a horse that might get the right setup. Maybe you could argue she was compromised by a lack of pace last time out in that smiling Tigress race. Uh, she's slowly rounding into form for Jeff Bondi, uh, one of only a couple three-year-olds in this race. Yeah, at first, at first glance, she was the one that I wanted to like in here, and I do like her a little bit. I picked her second, but there's also a part of me that wonders, uh, similar to the Smiling Tigress, I, I understand they're three-year-olds and they continue to improve and they can possibly jump up, but right now, I, I don't know that she's fast enough to win this race. I do think she could work out the best trip of them all, though. Red Stitch completes this field. She was able to pick up a piece most recently when benefiting from a solid pace up front. She's going to get another good pace scenario here. To me, she seems like the kind of mare that, that I would want to use underneath in single race exotics rather than shopping for the win. Yeah, I agree 100%. Seven times second or third from 18 lifetime. Another one that should work out a sort of off the pace trip, maybe mid pack. I think she comes with a run and maybe she can get a small piece. Pick time for our Thursday DRF bets race of the day. You're going with the four strike at daylight, five to two on the morning line. First time, Peter Miller. I thought she was visually impressive winning that. Clearly, the folks from Rockingham Ranch did as well. They're a sharp outfit. Miller gets this horse, like I said, past five years, dirt winner last out. First, after the trainer switch at Santa Anita is three for nine with a four and a half ROI. I think there's some things to like here about her if you're playing multi-race wagers from an individual race standpoint. Man, I, I think she's going to get buried at the windows. I picked her over the seven. I'll go with the two-party hostess, five to one on the morning line. Consistent races on the dirt, consistent buyer speed figures, somewhat versatile running style. Time from U.S. has her on the lead. If she gets there, I guess I'll be happy with it. If she doesn't get there, I'm comfortable knowing that she can sit from off the pace. We'll see how she handles this slight bump in class from the starter allowance into the Calbred nominers of one other than 2418 for me in the Thursday DRF Bets race of the day. Again, if you sign up for a DRF Bets account, $150 is yours. DRF.com forward slash join. Use the promo code TV150. Approximate post time for race number six at the Great Race Place on Thursday, 2.30 Pacific. Good luck.